Here is my full district code review for 2023, the eight year update. Crazy to think I started using DistroKid eight years ago in 2015 when I released my first ever album. And now eight years later, I've been using it with no issue and I absolutely love it. Jumping right into the review, I'd give it five out of five stars. As you can see right now, this is the main layout of DistroKid. To me, when it comes to a lot of these review videos that I do, I like to show you rather than just tell you about it. So first off, I'm gonna go to the cost. I feel like for a lot of musicians, you wanna know, okay, it might have a lot of features and whatnot, but how much does it cost? I love this pricing model. In terms of the basic package or the musician's package, it is $20 a year for unlimited uploads and you keep 100% of the profits. So if you wanna upload one track a day, you wanna go crazy and do 365 tracks, in a year, it's still only $20. Now there are add-ons and extras. I will talk about that a bit later in this video, but this is a basic package. For me, as you can see, I don't know if this is uh, I don't like how they have this laid out personally, I'm not gonna lie, but maybe not as uh, a parent, but I personally have the Musicians Plus account. As you can see, I could upgrade here if I want, but right now I have Musicians Plus, mainly because if, if I go down here, you can see customizable label name. If you release your music under the musician's account on DistroKid, the label, so to speak, is DistroKid. To me, I just gotta be honest, I feel like that's a bit tacky, I don't like that. So I kind of created my own label name. It's not really a label, it doesn't really, uh, I'm, like I'm the only one on it, it's not really like a real label, it's just the name I gave to the label I have, which is Meta Music Records, so that's why I have this, but even still, it's only $36 a year for unlimited uploads, and I have the customizable label name. You also do have a few other features here. I don't really use these, if you want me to be honest. The biggest one is the customizable label name. Now let's go to the main dashboard. As you can see, when you release music on DistroKid, you have this main layout. So if we go all the way down here, you can see my first ever release, which was the light nearby, way back when in 2015, and all the way up here. So the green dot, just to kind of briefly explain, is that the fact that the uh, the release is live, you know, uh, when you release something on DistroKid, you can see either three colors. Typically it's gonna be yellow, which means it's pending. Green means it's live, it's sent to stores. Red means it's rejected for whatever reason. And you can see kind of the name of the track, the artist, the picture, or the uh, album artwork, and these are the stores that it's released under. DistroKid releases to a ton. I mean, tons and tons of different stores. So with that being said, let's talk and let's look at the uploading process. This to me, in addition to the cost of DistroKid being only $20 a year, is one of the best parts. So I can either upload a video or music. For most people watching this, just click upload music because you can do like music videos on platforms now. I don't think it's as necessary. But as you can see, these are all the services first off that DistroKid is uploading to. So it is a bunch of them. The main ones, if you look at like Spotify and iTunes, but then more specific ones, especially when it comes to social media, like TikTok, for example, or Snapchat is one, or other different social media accounts, Instagram and Facebook. This is huge. I've had some of my songs go viral on TikTok. And I mean, especially in this day and age, especially in 2023, and as we move forward, it's crazy to say that I'm sometimes more happy and excited if one of my songs goes viral on TikTok than Spotify. You know, I mean, it's, especially with the, the videos and everything, it's just crazy. And then in addition, I also have Beatport. So for all my EDM artists out there, for all my DJs, I release my music, of course, on Beatport because I'm an EDM musician. And this is perfect right there. And in order to upload, it's very easy. I'm gonna skim through this pretty briefly. I've done a very in-depth analysis video about this with all the features. But as you can see, I quickly pick the number of songs. So I'm gonna do one track in terms of a single, an EP, an album, whatever. I have my uh, name right here. Here are basically all my accounts, like in terms of the Fichero name. Because obviously, if you have like say, the same name as another artist, it's gonna create a separate Spotify page just for you, et cetera, et cetera. However, as a very important side note, I have to mention, if you're watching this video, you're considering releasing on DistroKid, Make sure your artist name does not conflict with anybody else. You can have a lot of problems later on. And on top of that, make sure you're sure 
and certain about your artist's name. If you want to change it, it is a nightmare to say the least. That's probably an understatement. So make sure you're sure when you release your first track, no one else has the same name as you. And more importantly, you're good with that artist's name. Going down here, as you can see, just had to get that out of the way. I have my custom, so to speak, label name here. Again, it's just like the name that I picked. I can upload the artwork right here. I pick the genre, put in the song title, click upload. Again, there's some more features here, like if I have a version, for example. I also put in my songwriter real name. I suggest you do this and make sure it's accurate because you want to connect this to pros for my intense music business people out there. DigitalKid does not deal with pros or performance rights organizations. Here in America, for example, ASCAP and BMI. You have to do that on your own. So for me personally, I use SongTrust. I've done videos about it. So make sure that the songwriter's name is very accurate here because what I do is I kind of link it in a sense to SongTrust on SongTrust platform by picking myself as a songwriter and connecting kind of the, uh, the release, so to speak, via the ISRC code or just picking the release on Spotify on SongTrust. Then going down here, as you can see, just a uh, couple more things if I want to pick them. Is it radio edit, instrumental, etc.? And then we go to extras. I'm going to be honest, some of these are more worth it than others. Right now, if you want me to be blunt in 2023, I don't use any of these. I like to be very transparent. I just don't see any of these being worth it. The only one is a leave a legacy option. You may be wondering, like, okay, so... District is $20 a year for unlimited uploads, but what happens if I don't pay? Like what happens if you don't pay? Unfortunately, your music will be removed from stores. What this does, as you can see, it's a $29 one-time fee, or if it's an album, a $49 one-time fee, your music will never be removed from stores, even if like say you miss a payment, like say you just don't release with DistroKid ever again, you stop paying your fees, your music will still be in stores, which gives you a nice, like, almost like a nice mental cushion, so to speak. Some of these now, like I said, in, in addition to this one, like, I think that's a decent one. Like, say you release one album a year, for example. I think it's not a bad idea just in case, like, say something happens with your credit card. You know, you, you never know. Life happens. Stuff comes up. And then going around here, you have a few different, like, very technical ones in terms of, like, say, loudness uh, normalization, a title master slash MQA, you know, uh, the store maximizers, some of these other ones. I really don't use these. Um, back in the day, in terms of, I think like last year when I did the digital kid review for 2022, this used to be for Shazam and iPhone Siri. Now in 2023, and this happened, I think it was last year, moving the year before, I can't remember when the change happened. Apple Music and uh, Shazam are connected. I think they bought them out. I may be wrong about that, but uh, they're connected now. So when you release music, on DigiKid, as you can see, if I go back up here, Apple Music is automatically checked. It's included with the uh, the membership. So in addition to that, because of that, your, your music will automatically be put on Shazam. So you don't have to worry about paying any extra money now to be on Shazam, which is pretty awesome. But there is a few different features here when it comes to the discovery pack. If you want me to be honest, I don't really use these. Uh, like, I don't really think this is necessary. I mean, it can be helpful. I'm not saying it can't, uh, but, and then go, you go down here, you check all these and done. So the uploading process, especially if you look at a lot of other sites to upload your music, this is way more simple and way easier. Now, the biggest thing I think about DistroKid, among all of this that I'm mentioning, and I want this video to be very straightforward, I've done very, very technical videos about DistroKid going really in depth about the features, the add-ons, you know, more technical stuff when it comes to uploading, the business side of DistroKid. But the big thing I want to show you, if I go here, as you can see, is the goodies. The goodies. Now, what's pretty awesome about this is there's so many unique features within DistroKid. I've done a very in-depth video about the goodies. I think the video is almost like 20-ish minutes long because there's so much you get with your membership that's just included. Some of this does cost money, I will say that, but I have things like here in terms of slaps.com where you can kind of see how good your music is and you hear other people's music, play the spotlights, that we have playlists to get your music featured on Spotify. In terms of promoting yourself, I can create like hyper follows, mini videos. So I've done like funny meme videos and you can create these for free, boom, right here. I also have like video generators, promo cards of like, so you wanna create like a little, a little uh, 
advertisement, so to speak, that you want to put on social media, on Facebook, or on Instagram, you can quickly do that here. I have special access. And this has been super popular, as you can imagine. Spotify for artists is very useful in terms of the analytics. Of course, the YouTube OAC, where you get that cool little note check mark. That means you're verified as an official musician on YouTube. I know a lot of people want to do that for like bragging rights almost or their look. Super easy to do that with this. Apple Music for Artists. If you do like say Twitch, anything with gaming or streaming, for example, you can connect your Twitch channel as well with Tidal. They have their specific artist payments program. Enhance your music. We have a few different things here. If I want to add lyrics, credits, and more. Protecting your music. So these are just useful. And let's say something goes wrong in terms of digital lock. So let's say somebody tries to steal your music or upload it and say it's theirs or whatever, you have that. And then the vault is very helpful too, in case you don't know. Everything that's uploaded to DisherKid is backed up for free. So let me see, you know, I'll just, just show you, I guess, you know, I know I kind of gloss over a lot of these. The vault to me is very helpful because I have had my computer crash and loosen my files. So I already have, which is pretty ridiculous, 46 gigs of my music. And this is the releases in terms of the audio files and the album artwork in terms of the artwork files, whether it's a JPEG or whatever. 46 gigs, I pay nothing for this. The, the, the vault and the cloud is included with your membership. Even if you have the basic one, which is $20 a year, this is included, which is pretty awesome. And then lastly, going back here, helpful when needed, fixer, if like say something goes wrong, Spotify URI looker upper, same thing with the Apple ID and the YouTube allow list. Like say if you do use YouTube content ID, which I suggest you don't, I have done a video about that as well, uh, but uh, you can use this if you do happen to do that, where basically say, hey, even though this video does use my music, don't flag it, don't copyright strike it, don't basically do anything with it. They're allowed to use my music. And that's what makes Kid honestly so awesome. I know kind of bounced around a lot in this video, but I want to be very specific because when it comes to this platform, as you can see, very simple. In the past eight years, this layout or the GUI or the graphical user interface has not changed at all. We've all been there <clears throat> when you're using sites and like you check the next week or the next month and they change the layout and you're like, wait, where, where was this again? And stuff like that. This is the exact same as it was eight years ago when I first signed up. And I love that. I love the simplicity showing you again, when it comes to uploading this miles and miles, miles easier than any other platform where it's very simple. If you just want to upload it, so you just like pick the amount of songs, click here for the, uh, the artwork. What's the genre? Type in the song, pick the file, do this. Do you want add-ons? Yes, no, in this case, no. Boom, that's it, done, it's that quick. Obviously there are more advanced features if you wanna use them, but it's super simple. And then of course, like I showed you, all these amazing goodies here that you can do, and these ones as well. There's just so much to district and that's why I love that when you do sign up, you're part of this almost kind of unique community of all these little features that it has. Because as you can imagine now, and it's kind of unfortunate to say, being a musician now, especially in 2023, is not just about making really good music. Of course, that's always the number one priority, but you gotta be big on social media. You gotta be doing, I know a lot of people do the social phone now. You gotta be big on creating, you know, little viral videos and being big on YouTube and TikTok and all these platforms and using those platforms to your advantage to get your music out there and get it heard. I know a lot of musicians hate to admit that. You know, I did a video about this like a month ago. A lot of musicians like to ignore TikTok, for example, saying, oh, it's just for 12 year olds dancing. Not anymore. Love it or hate it, TikTok's here to stay and it's blowing up a lot. I think it will be taken over, by the way, by YouTube Shorts this year. So I want to say that as a side note, but that's huge. And then lastly, let's go to the bank. I'll show you this here. Super simple as well. If let's say I want to check how much money I've made, I can see that here. I do have this blocked out for obvious reasons. But as you can see here, you know, I joined in February of 2015. And there is a two to three month lag. So even though I'm filming this video in January of 2023, I can only see until November of 2022. So there is like a two to three month lag. So let's say if somebody goes and buys your album or streams it, it's gonna take about two to three months for that money to then appear in your account. You can kind of see this here, uh, right there, just to make it a bit more descriptive. Once the money appears right in your banking system, all you do is click withdraw earnings. And then once you do, it takes anywhere between one and 14 business days. Being honest, for me, I say it takes maybe two or three business days to appear in my bank account. I think they just say one to 14 days. You know, you never know. 
if something happened, if there's like a, a banking issue, if there's like some issue with DistroKid. But being honest, it usually takes only a couple days. My money's in my account after I click with, uh, with the draw earnings. There isn't really like a minimum amount either. I think it's, right, I take that back. I think there is, but it's like 10 cents or 20 cents. I can't remember how much it is, but it's like, it's so little. I've seen other sites before that say, okay, you could only cash out your earnings if you make above $50 or $100. Nope. I've literally, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm not exaggerating, cashed out my earnings when I had like two or three dollars and I'm not making that up. And that two or three bucks was in my account in a couple of days. Overall, I'm so happy that eight years ago, I picked DistroKid as my main music distributor. It's the only one I've used and the only one that I plan to use. My friend suggested it again, eight years ago when I was releasing my first album. And I'm so happy that after looking at all of them and reading blog posts and everything, I was like, you know what? I'll give this DistroKid one a shot. Seems kind of cool. It seems very simple. Eight years later, still crushing it. Still five out of five stars. And as you can see from the video, I just scraped the surface. There is so much to DistroKid and there's so much that you get when you sign up for only $20 a year. 100% the best music distributor, period.